that on top of like booking and managing podcasts and then the time that it takes to record the podcasts and um, wait a minute, you like, do other podcasts beyond Steep Conversations? No. We are that? upset. I we're going to be filing a note with your publisher that that is unacceptable. Guys, sorry. I mean, they're not nearly as fun. Yes. Not nearly as fun. All right, we're back in. We're back in the game. Back I feel in. good again. We're back in the game. <laughs> Are you ever going to these book signings and having someone come up and be like, I loved your book so much, I looked you up, and I'm so excited that you live in blah, 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 this place, and, uh, you know, you go to this supermarket. Like, has anyone really creeped you out in that regard? Oh, no. Thankfully, not yet. Like, I'm not that big. I'm not big enough yet, but maybe one day. I'm yeah, like, is you that gotta... the goal or is it not the goal? <laughs> like, that, you know, is that level, like, too much where it's, like, creepy status? What I tell people when people say, what is your comedy goal? I always tell people I want to be able to perform when I want, where I want. Yeah. And what I've been told by multiple comics who are far, much further ahead in their career than me is like that the other side, the other edge of that sword is accepting what the payment that comes with it, which is yeah. sometimes you will be recognized and sometimes you will have to do things you don't want to do and have someone come up and be like, um, on episode 17 of your podcast, I noticed that you said your favorite color is orange. And then on this one, you said it was green. So what is it? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like a different kind of scrutiny that comes with that. 1000%. Yeah. I mean, it's true. You're exactly right. Like, I think as artists, we like strive for that um, freedom where we don't have. Yeah. Because it's like always like those Venn diagrams that I feel like are always posted all over the Internet where it's like the things you love to do and the things that make money. And it's like, mm -hmm they're just kind of like tip off and since launching the book i've realized very quickly like oh you have to sell like a shit ton of books in order to really make money and um it's just a hard it's a hard task to do especially when you're a debut author and a lot of other authors in the industry and my publisher were kind of like you really start making money on your second book likely because it takes so long to like build a readership with your first and um you know, I just I'm at the point where it's like I want that financial independence where I can like have more time because when I'm a full time mom taking care of kids, trying to market and promote the first book and then write the second, like I don't have time to do anything because my kids are still too young to be in school full time. So that's the game I'm trying to play right now. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I have so many questions on that. Before we jump into that, I want to talk about the tea we're drinking because I, yeah, I don't know if you know this. That. Yeah, our listeners steep at home with us. Our steeple, if I may. Uh, our steeple. Um, today we are drinking elderberry healer. It is a reishi tea to the surprise of nobody who listens as I drink this. I drink all the reishi teas. Um, it's interesting. Smell. I haven't tasted it yet. It steeps at 200 oh, for mine. five minutes. Um, it's a little hot. I'm going to go for it. I love mine like scalding hot. So I've already been um, a lot. Oh, I love I'll your RBJ. Wait, is oh, that? Yeah. What's your? Oh. Mine is, um, this is what a published author looks like. I, I and you know what? I, that's what I, when I first saw you, I was like, this is a published author. I knew it. Mm -hmm. I remember when, so for anyone who's listening, we, we've known each other for, I mean, years, met at Google. And I want to say it was within the first year that we were there that, that you were like, yeah, I've been working on a book. I'm like, oh yeah, me too. Um, you were like, I'm accomplishing this other thing. I was like, oh me, I'm sleeping a lot. Uh, <laughs> But but I but I do remember that, and you Me and too. I bonded over the fact that like you you and I were both at a tech company, and mm -hmm. had outside passions that, and this is not me taking away from anybody else who has outside passions, but like you and I had outside passions that we were willing to put in the work to pursue. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Is that fair to say? No, I think that is fair to say because I think it's one thing to. Um, Yes, it's one thing to kind of do the passions or even just enjoy the passions, but to try to make it, I think, like we kind of already said, like your livelihood or your mm. career. Like it was like it was like a side hustle for us that was like that we wanted that we were just um, grinding at to like make a real hustle. 
<laughs> well, yeah, so, so what I always explain to people, and this is like a, such a nerdy explanation, is I'm always like, have you ever seen a supply and demand graph where it's just like an X almost? I'm always like, if my, if, you know, if my Google is here and my comedy is here for those listening, I, I made an X and I'm on the opposite ends of the X, but like where they meet at a certain point, I can jump off of the Google track onto uh, the comedy track. You know what I mean? It's essentially mm -hmm. trying to find oh, that, like that. That, that intersection. Um, yeah. And you did that, which is insane. I mean that as I a compliment. Did. I don't mean insane. No, no, like, what are you thinking? No, 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 no. I know. I can. I know that. Um, definitely. And it's not that. I, like, uh, I did do that. I did. But it's yeah. not. And I, I, I did, as you know all too well, because I did share. You were one of the first people I shared my dream of publishing a book with. Yeah. Um. But I didn't. It wasn't like an overnight decision, as you know. Like you, you know that I've been wanting to quit my full-time job and just focus on writing in the book for a very long time. But it took me almost six to seven years for me to actually do it and get to the point in my writing career where I was like, okay, let's see if I can make this work. Um, and I still don't know if I can, you know, like I... <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. Be, and I'll let you know, we'll keep you posted. Um, it could be that like in a few years, I had to go back to corporate America, but you know, if I do, I do like, I last this past year. Um, it's, it's just wild how much changes and happens in an year, isn't it? Like this time last year, I mean, I was working full time, um, with the two kids, things were just crazy. I was getting the book ready for publication and I got to a point where like, it was all too much. And I realized that I couldn't work a very demanding full-time job, have a four-year-old and a two-year-old, and then also market and promote the book and write the book. Like I couldn't do it all. And so I had to make a decision. And that decision was quitting Google because I knew if I had it to fall back on, I don't think I would have been like, nope, this is it. Like, yeah, you know, I'm going for it. Um, I, here's my question, not to interrupt you. I'm just so curious. You know. like, so a lot of people say to me, like, you should leave right? Like go pursue okay. this thing. And okay. then I always go, and, and they're like, you know, in worst case scenario, you can get a job in tech again. And yeah. my brain, and this is where I'm curious what your brain does. Yeah. My brain goes, could you though? My brain goes, uh, I think that like mm -hmm. other, like if, you, if I ever tried to go back to Google, Google would be like, you were still working here? <laughs> we didn't even know. <laughs> we meant to get rid of you 10 years ago. <laughs> Yeah. Like that's my that's my first thought, and my second thought, if I apply somewhere else, like a different you know tech company, they'll be like, I don't know how Google kept you on their payroll, but we're certainly not bringing you on ours. <laughs> like that is where yeah. my head. Like, does your head do that to you? Maybe mm. you're healthier than me. I'm open to that. No, idea. oh heck, yes, it does. Um, I'm also in a little bit of a different spot than you, where I felt like the stars aligned. And mm. you don't have, um, and I'm not saying that it's still like you don't have a very demanding life, especially with like the comedy and working a full-time job, but it's not like you have the additional stress of kids yet. And it's not like, and it's Ooh. not <laughs> like, I also now, as you, for people who know, I used to live in Chicago, but I recently during the pandemic, um, while we were working remotely, I relocated my family back to the Indianapolis area to get more support from my family. And yeah. so because of that, like I was going to have to start traveling more. Um, my manager and my director, I think, were willing to be really flexible because I'd worked there for a long time. I was doing a good job. They were very supportive, but like the expectation was very close to changing. And as you know, they're starting to scrutinize going back into the office very closely now. So um, that wasn't something I was willing to do. So it made my decision a lot easier. It kind of backed me into a, a wall and it was kind of the perfect timing. With mm. that being said, I will say what I feel like I really learned these past two years is that like you do need to close certain doors in order for other ones to open. And mm. um, I think that time and those decisions and those doors look different for every single person. But um I think that's usually like what you have to do. Like you can't expect both doors to just open for you magically. Like you have to, to, to make the hard decisions at times and just jump. I feel like I'm going to close the door and then 
there is no other door and then I'm just trapped in a room. Like, I feel like yeah. it's going to be like, I don't know if, did you ever watch the show, Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yes. And Nickelodeon. Okay, so, yeah. yeah. So it, 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 okay. This is a really weird tangent. Um, there was a, okay. There was an episode that I scared. I am wondering where this is going. Like, there's an episode where... that scared the daylights out of me. And my sister made me watch it and it saved me forever. <laughs> this, this like family moves into this house and it turns out that there is a, um, a I, I believe she is, she is mute and she might oh. be deaf, but there is a woman, a ghost, I think, who lives in the attic and is stuck there. Oh. And like and like writes things on the walls. Oh, and that's like really terrifying. How is that on Nickelodeon? I don't know. And that it turns out, really... by the way, that like just to be <laughs> just to give some defense to this ghost, it turns out like she was just tor- she was a tortured soul. She wasn't hurting anybody, you know. Um, yeah. And she did, you know, she needed her ghosty soul to be freed. Anyone who <laughs> listens to like horror movies who's listening to this is like, what is he talk a ghosty soul? What is this a man? Ghost- yeah. Um, but like part of me is like, okay, if I close the door on my day job, I'll just be trapped in the attic, writing messages to myself, unable to get out with no doors. Mm-hmm. Like that is, that was a very long way to get to that, but I'm so happy I took that journey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think one thing that did help when making the decision for myself was identifying yeah. what kind of Like there's ways you can make these decisions responsibly, right? So like, is there a certain amount of income that you want to have? Or is there a certain amount of cushion that you want to fall back on? Like, you know, I think that there, I think I also did have to accept that in that vein, um, it was like no amount was ever going to be enough for me to feel really secure with making this decision. But um, I think you also are underestimating how, personable you are how funny you are how likely well connected you are like you know you have all of these things going for you that i think um i have no doubt like if you were to ever leave google and if comedy didn't pan out exactly how you wanted another opportunity would and it would be for the better i really do believe that i'm going to tell you this so i see a therapist once a week i'm going to uh-huh. fire him and i'm going to schedule an hour <laughs> just for us um and uh, because it makes me feel great um no i do think it's interesting one of the things that you brought up is is that you Mm -hmm. you have two kids very cute kids mind you oh Um, they're cute biggest objection to your children honestly is like josh is a universal name that i think you could have used but you didn't and that's (laughs) that's your own problem i do Um, love josh is it joshua or josh technically it's joshua no one calls me that but you can Mm. if you want to but no i I do love joshua and josh my mother doesn't even call me that. Uh, she calls me the other day. She tried to say something to me over the phone. She said my dad's name, who's passed away 10 years ago. So my dad's name, then my uncle's name, then our dog that passed away three years ago, and then me. <laughs> so like, she, and, and it was still not Joshua. She was like, Lee, I mean, Stuart, I mean, buddy, oh, Josh. <laughs> and I'm like, thank you. Yes, um, mother. Here yeah, yeah. What do you need? Um, yeah. but, but to, to go back to that question, so you have two kids, right? Mm-hmm. Which, mm-hmm. which, and I don't have children, so tell me if this is a mischaracterization, but a kid at the age of four and a kid at the age of two is essentially also a full-time job. So you have yeah. the, mm-hmm. a full-time job with two kids who, mm-hmm. and I, and I have my niece and nephew actually are four and two. So like, this is, uh-huh. anytime oh, I know. say that, by the way, people think that I'm saying that they're foreign Two and I'm like, oh, no, no, I'm not oh. foreign, and they're not foreign, <laughs> which would be fine if they were, but their ages are four and two. Um, but I do think that, like, at that age, ki- kids only know what they know in that moment, so you mm-hmm. can't turn to a four year old, uh, definitely mm-hmm. not a two year old, but also not a four year old, and say. I love you. I'm going to be your mother. I'm going to be the most supportive mother in the world. And also, I just want you both to know that I have personal ambitions and I still see myself as my own person. And I really mm-hmm. want to succeed in those ambitions. Would you mind kind of holding down Chilly. the fort every now and again, just so mom can kind of get done what she needs to do? Like, isn't that because at that point you were balancing three jobs, you're still now balancing two, though. Is that not yeah. is that an incorrect assessment? No, it's a G dang accurate assessment. Thank you. Curse it up. Curse it up. <sighs> I'm tired. I'm really tired. <laughs> we have an explicit label 
it is so hard. Like, I don't know how to put it any other way. And just other than to be very real about it, like it is extremely hard. And I think my most precious asset at this, I said asset, I don't know. The most precious thing to me at this time is time. And I like don't have enough of it to do everything that I want to do. And I was at a book signing this past weekend um, and the book, the bookstore owner was, I love her. She was fantastic. And she was like, cause I was like, I'm so, I feel so guilty because I've been spending almost all my free time because I have like, you know, my kids are both gone at the same time, only two for two sections of time, two days a week. So I feel like that. And then I get their nap time and the quiet time and that's it. And so, you know, and then I get the weekends, but like you kind of want to spend time as a family on weekends. So I just am trying to find more time. And I was telling this um, bookstore owner, I was like, you know, I just don't, at least I feel guilty just promoting the book and not writing the second because so many people are finishing the first and they're like, when's the second one coming out? And and she was like, your job is to focus on selling this book for the next 90 days, like the 90 days post launch. And I was like, okay, you know, just to have somebody else tell me like, this is where you need to be prioritizing your attention is, was so important for me because I'm, I feel like I'm, my attention's being pulled in a million different directions all the time. Um, and that's not really me answering your question. It's just kind of like me explaining my headspace, like my frazzled headspace <sighs> that changes every day. But I, but I, but I do think that that is uh, an, an answer in a way because um, I think that no matter how old we get, and obviously we both just turned twenty one, so like you know, but like um, I know very fresh. So it was my birthday on Monday, and someone was like. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Uh, it's totally fine. I, I, that was not. I mean, listen, that is a, a grab for a gift, but um, <laughs> but I know. Uh, yeah. Well, I already I already have your book, but I you know I'll take a second. Um, but uh, no, it's it's funny because it was my birthday, and someone goes, and someone was like, uh, "So how old are you turning?" And I was like, "In body or spirit?" And they were like, "They were like, what?" <laughs> I, I was like, that. "I, I was love like, that. Uh, I'm gonna use that." Spirit, 18. Um, body, That's kind of 37. People don't, I feel like people don't really ask that anymore. Um, I think that's because when you are at an age where no one is carting you at a bar, no one really cares how old you're turning. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that terrible? Mm -hmm. Should I not have said that? Is. No, I think um, it's true. I agree. I do. I, it's funny. I got carded the other day and um, oh, the guy you? was like. I love when I get carded. It really doesn't happen oh, very so often. Oh my gosh, I loved it. He, the guy was like, he's, he's like, sorry to do this, we can get your idea. I go, sorry, this is the best moment of my day. <laughs> yes. I only get carded when I'm with my younger brother-in-law and his fiance. And I feel like it's because they look young and then they're like, all right, we carded these guys. We have to card you too. And I'm like, whatever, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, you're like, you're like, please card me. Please card me. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, I'll ride yeah. on their coattails. <laughs> I'll, just like, I'll just like turn to the bartender. I'm like, man, college is hard. And he's like, yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> he's like you're still there Whoop. dude you're still there wow yeah i i was like i'm, I'm only a junior Dang. and he's like yeah just go inside like nobody wants this i'm <laughs> like okay that's that's on me i i regularly embarrass uh my fiance with stuff like that like if we're like out and about like i'll if I, if we're gonna like order a drink like if i go to order a drink i'll turn to the server and i'll be like i promise i'm legal you know and uh <laughs> and she'll just look at me and be like why She's why so did lame. you need why? to do that like yeah. why oh God, like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. you know it's, sir yeah it's a problem i i drive her insane all the time um yes. i saw a video the other day that popped into my tiktok feed that was you talking about the book i think i hearted it and uh -huh. um and i was just like good for her like i don't know how to do tiktok successfully um as you'll see uh mm, but mm -hmm. you know i just do i just go on and say random stuff and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't yeah i think that it is so unpredictable there's a few things about tiktok and i'm learning like i'm learning a lot um and i there's so many things that i know now that i would have done differently before the book launched especially yeah. on tiktok um but you just can't know until you're going through it um, but TikTok is like, I didn't realize how different of an environment it would be than Instagram because I had my following primarily on Instagram and people who had followed me throughout almost my whole book publishing journey. And I think that's what garnered a lot of support for the book launch was because people have known that I've been working toward this goal for so long. 
And so they wanted to support me and, um, you know, people from all walks of life follow me on Instagram, Yeah, you know, people from Google, people from my high school, people from call, like people from all over. Um, but it's just different on TikTok. Like it's not as personal. I feel like you just kind of like put things out in the universe and you're like, all right, I don't know who's going to see it. And there's an element of that that's freeing. Cause you're like, all right, you know, I'm never going to meet you like judge me all you want, but like, you know, I don't have to worry about like that judgment aspect of it. But then I'm sure. also like, it's also like a whole different ball game. And you're like, wait, that, that got that many views or likes, like, you well, know, I, I just, there's no math to it. The other challenge is that, okay. So like, it's funny. So I talk on stage about how, um, and this is going to sound unrelated, but it is not. And by the way, if there's ever going to be a phrase on my epitaph, it will be that. Um, yeah. But uh, a lot of what I what I talk about on stage is that a lot of people are focused on like you should. They always tell people you should see a therapist. Like, oh, seeing a therapist is great. You should see a therapist. And they only think as far as that. What they don't think about is, oh, it's really hard to find a therapist. That is an entirely separate part of this experience that no one talks about. And, Absolutely. and and it's kind of it's a it's a very subtle undertone but no one pa- calls attention to it in your case mm-hmm. it is an insanely hard process to write the book so that's number one mm-hmm. number two and, and obviously i you should be talking about this more than me but like it's insanely mm-hmm. hard to write the book and rewrite it and rewrite it and re and i can mm-hmm. say that a thousand times it's insanely hard <laughs> then to navigate the publishing journey, whether you're doing uh, uh, fully mm-hmm. with a publisher, hybrid, mm-hmm, or self, mm-hmm, or all mm-hmm, that, mm-hmm, which I want to mm-hmm. ask you all about. But yeah. then no one talks about this other piece that is kind of subtle, which is like, cool, and by the way, because you're not John Grisham or James Patterson <laughs> or J.K. Rowling, yeah. you need to promote your own book, and good luck. We're, we'll help you a little. But you need to go figure out this entirely separate skill set and mm-hmm. do your best to make this happen. Like, I feel like no one mm-hmm. talks about that. No one talks about it. You're so right. No one talks about it. And I'm kind of trying to figure that out now, a way to talk about it in a way that, like, I can share it with more people, especially debut authors. But you're exactly right. Like, every stage of the journey, you think you're at the hardest part. It's exactly what you said. And I've, I've said that a few times to myself, actually. Like, writing the book is the hardest part. No, finding an agent is the hardest part. No. Going on submission is the hardest part. No, getting it published and publishing it's the hardest part. No, selling the book and building your own brand as an author is is the hardest part. And you just can't ever anticipate it. And you have no idea the length that you have to go to in order to promote and sell yourself. Um, Sounded like that could have gone in the... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you're, the you're like, listen, you have to go through. Well, it's I way, will, way, like... I, uh, yeah, <laughs> like I will do what it takes. Um, <laughs> no, but I think like this, this applies to a lot of, um, I'm not at all suggesting we should go into like kindergarten classrooms and be like, if you have dreams, you better think about all the angles. But like, <laughs> I, I really but, like I, but like, I do think about that, right? So like if a kid is like, cool, I really want to be an astronaut. It's like, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm, I'll bet you do because you want to go into space and that's awesome. Do you know the physical toll it takes? Are you aware yeah. that you're, you know, you're going to have to yeah. maybe put off having a family because you're going to need to prioritize space, mm-hmm. or, you know, overall mm-hmm. costs. The same thing is like being a comedian, being an author. No one says also you, even if you have a business manager, you need to be your own business manager. You need to understand like, a lot of these things. Percent. You know, you can have lawyers review your contracts, but at the end of the day, you're the one who has to make the call. Am I willing to give up this percentage of my mm-hmm. sales? Like, or, mm-hmm. you know, I'll give you a great example. So like when I, I wrote a, a play that got published years back and they were like, uh, they gave us a contract and I had a lawyer look at it and she said, do you want to negotiate a higher advance? Mm -hmm. And I was like, hell yeah. And she goes, just so you know, there are many more strings that start to attach themselves the more money that they give to you. And then Mm. she started explaining all this to me. And I was like, oh, holy crap. Like, why Mm -hmm. does no one, no one talks about that. But like, that was Mm -hmm. a big underlying piece. Like, Mm -hmm. did you, when you went into this process, after you did the hard part of writing and rewriting and rewriting, and then navigating publishing, did you have any expectation of the, what you were going to be getting yourself into with the promotion of the book? I had heard from enough authors that like, even no matter what kind of publishing support you have, you still have to basically um, 
either get a publicist or be your own brand manager and promote the heck out of your book. Because especially as yeah. debut authors, you don't get the kind of support that many established authors do who bring in a steady source of income for the publishing house in which it behooves that publishing house to continue to like market, market, market that author who ha might have more of a backlist. Um, and so I think that's like a, um, I think that is what, to answer your question, I had some idea, but I didn't really realize the full extent. And I don't think I could have even understood how much time and how time consuming it could be. So like, for example, even um, like we were talking about with like Instagram and TikTok, I mean, th the social media strategy alone for the book and for myself as an author could be a full-time job. But it's like that on top of everything else, you know? It's like on that on top of like trying to figure out book signings and events and coordinate those. Um, that on top of like booking and managing podcasts and then the time that it takes to record the podcasts. And um, Wait a minute. You like, do other podcasts beyond Steep Conversations? No. We are that? upset. I We're going to be filing a note with your publisher that that is unacceptable. Guys, sorry. I mean, they're not nearly as fun. Yes. Not nearly as fun. All right. We're back in. We're back in the game. I feel in. good again. We're back in the game. <laughs> Steep Conversations will forever be one of my favorites. Oh, thank God. Um, but, but yeah. So I don't – I mean – no, I don't I don't think you can really know until you're in it. And so mm. I would like to um and I still want to do this, but again, time is mm. create a Substack uh for debut authors. And I kind of have the name already for it called Rising Talent, and I want to basically Ooh. share just like quick 5-minute not even read because like I don't have enough time to put more than that once a week where I share like um things that I wish I would have known before launching my book and I also highlight, you know, bookstagram accounts book talk accounts that are supportive of debut authors um and so like i kind of want to try to make a community out of it i just with how crazy things have been i haven't had the chance but that's something i really want to do in december and january are there any and, and i want to i'm going to take us to the first segment in a second but i'm just so curious are there any very established off authors like like a like a stephen king Right. Or, yeah. or, you know, I named some of the other airport authors or like a Jody Picoult or someone like that. I don't uh -huh. know. Uh -huh. are, there, are, are, there, are, are there, are there, is that, sorry, is that derogatory to say? <laughs> no, no, uh, I knew exactly. It's like, I've never heard that, but I'm laughing because I know exactly what you're talking about when you say it like that. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like, are there any of those people who are out there being like, Hey, new authors, like DM me, send me a note. If you just got no. published, let me help you. No, not even in the slightest. There's been a few. Um, Stacey Wilmingham, who wrote A Flicker in the Dark. She's a New York Times bestseller. I was going to say, that um, sounds familiar. Yeah. She's um, based in Charleston. She, um, one of my friends connected me with her, and we talked before the book came out. Um, and she was incredible, and she still kind of has been. Um, but that was because I had a connection to her. And, you know, even though she was very helpful, a lot of, like, what she talked about was, like, the main things that I did when my book came out was like I never said no to anything, which is something I'm definitely trying to do. And, and you're like, now I'm going to start, but I didn't used to. Yes. And then she was also like, a lot of it's luck. Like her book got selected for a book club. And that was the main reason I think it really took off and became a New York Times bestseller. And of course, that helps you um, organically you know, that, that's not to say the book wasn't great. I just think that because yeah, yeah. it was selected for a book club, she got all of these readers she might not have. And so she was able to get a, a big following rather quickly. And um, I think that's so like, I think you would agree with that too, right? Like so much of it is luck in this industry. And it's like navigating that with the manifesting and the doors opening. And it's like, ah, I want to get freaking lucky. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, you know, one, one of my favorite uh, phrases is that and I apply this to comedy, but I'll, I'll, I'll make it broader. Um, pursuing a creative uh, endeavor of any kind um, is not and will never be a meritocracy. Um, you know, I could not agree more. Sorry you, to interrupt. You, I just no, my God, please. I love a, that. Listen, I'm a New Yorker and, you know, I love a good interruption. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use um, that. I'm going to use but it's, it a lot. It's the reality. There, there is you can write the perfect book. Okay. And then the person next to you can write a mediocre book. Mm -hmm. um, 
if that book had uh, uh, you know a blue cover and yours is kind of a grayish and reddish, and that person happens to have a connotation where they're like, you know what? Mm, I used to date someone that had a grayish reddish sweatshirt and I didn't like it. But this blue yeah. one, this is interesting. I'm gonna go with this blue book. And the yeah. person who did that happens to be a super influential social media person. And then yep. they start blogging going, hey, I love this blue book. And no one yep. says, hey, was there another book that you saw that you didn't choose? No one's saying that. Yeah. So this blue yeah. book author who maybe phoned in their book is now getting a lot of press and a lot of respect and a lot of love. Whereas you who put in all this work and effort, ah, you know what? Sorry, Clara, you chose red and gray and it just didn't work for you this time. <laughs> Like what a terrible thing! I but feel like that's like a real that's thing. Literally, how it goes, though. I feel like, you know, and that's not to say that luck doesn't strike you down the road, and that the more you put yourself out there for different opportunities, the more likely certain lucky incidents like that are to happen. Um, but it's still, you know, I just think that there is, and I think that that was to go back to your question about the journey and it being hard. Like I think there's elements of that throughout the whole process of getting published too like there's luck with finding an agent there's luck with going on submission because you know for an author you think you land an agent after all this time and you think that's the answer no nope, wrong you actually have to get the agent actually has to sell the book which mm, turns out is almost impossible and like you could be have the most amazing book but like oh if this publisher just acquired something like it oh they don't want to spend the money on it oh timing's not right you know then there go your chances yeah just like I that. I really do believe that. Um, you know what? Actually, this is as good a time as any. Let's jump right into the Newly Friend game. Are you ready? Yes. And wait, can I just say one last thing real Please. quick about us, about our love for each other? But then I do. Yes. There were so many things. But I still remember to this day you pitching. Um, I was about to go to my very first writer's conference before yeah. the book was done. And I remember you helping me parse out my pitch for the book because at that point mm. which fiction authors don't go and pitch your book to an agent if you don't have the book finished that really got some agents very irritated learn okay. from my mistakes i was a young young new author i had no idea what i was doing no one's teaching no one's teaching and that's a perfect example of timing because had my book been in the place it was now and i went there and that i would have gotten an agent i know hands down because of the initial interest but when they found out like i don't have a finished book they were like what are you doing anyways you helped me develop a pitch for the book that to this day is still one of my like key elevator pitches. Oh my gosh. I, do, you I'm remember that? do you know that? Do you remember that? I, I recall us having a big, long conversation before that. And I remember I was super stoked for you because you were like, yeah, I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. And I was like, you're smart and talented. What do you mean? What are you doing? Like, you're, you're yeah. going to, it'll be great. Well, you know, yeah, yeah. but I didn't know anything about that, uh, that it's still part of your elevator pitch. I have no clue what it was, but clearly, you know, whatever you're doing is working. <laughs> like that's... I'll, I'll give it to you later. But yeah, yeah, it's just like interesting how there's certain people. And I think it is often other creative people who are formative in your own journey. And I feel like that was mm -hmm. always you. And I feel like, you were always a person who we could just talk about um, our dreams and our aspirations with, and we just got it, you know? And I do feel like my advice for people is to find other creatives out there that are like that, who understand, because I think it's what allows you to keep going on this very challenging journey that's filled with a lot of no's and roadblocks. Let me say something. You didn't get me a birthday gift, but that was a birthday gift. Um, mm. I mm. love that. You're like, mm, I got mm. you. Um, mm. Okay, let's jump into the first segment. Okay. You ready for the Newly Friend Game? Yeah. Um, the Newly Friend Game, it's like the Newlywed Game, but we're friends. Um, we, you know, listen, you're already married and I'm on the way. Um, <laughs> uh, as, as we do this, so I ask you a question. We both write down our answers. Uh, okay. Then we, we flip to see if we got them right. Okay. And then uh, we will do either the same or a different question for me. Kind of can go either way. Okay. Um, you have a four and two year old, and you are an author. Mm -hmm. I have a four and two niece and nephew, and uh -huh. I read them books all the time. So the question I want to ask you is what, as, as you, not as your kids, because your kids will have their favorite books, as an author, what is your favorite book to read to your kids through the lens of an author? 
Is that, and don't give me, don't say it out loud, but is that a fair question? Yeah. Okay. You have one in mind. You're already like, listen, I like this one. Yeah. Cause, cause I like, do. I don't want to, I don't want to like steal your answer away. But what I will say is like, my nephew likes uh-huh. Thomas the Tank Engine. Uh-huh. And I'm just like, not here for it. Like, it's fine. Uh-huh. But like, there are other ones I read that like, are melodic or rhythmic or actually have a story where you see a character develop and change. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. I'm like, this mm-hmm. got me. This got me. Yes. Um, okay. Yes. So don't say it out loud. Write it down. Okay. okay. What is your favorite book to read your kids as an author? Um, I don't think this is right, but I, I'll tell you why I chose it. Okay. It's about a woman that gets embroiled in a terrorist plot. Um <laughs> No. For kids. Um, my son. For kids. My son has picked up my book before. I've been like, these are a lot of words. These are a lot yeah. of words. So he's like, boring. wait a minute. So she's kind of getting blackmailed? And you're like, you shouldn't know what that <laughs> means. Um, okay. Um, all right. Flip your board on three. One, two, okay. three. What do you got for me? Um, I wrote, oh. oh, you dropped something. I wrote one it? fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. What? Oh, I, I can't see. What no, did you write? No, it's dear boy gr- and dear boy slash dear girl because they're like oh. two different books. One's for one's for boys and one's for girls. Oh, my God. Tell me all about what that is. I don't know oh, what I want to know. Oh, it's adorable and it'd be such a good gift for your niece and nephew. Um, okay. So it's just like a great – I love the message behind it. It's basically just like dear boy and it – kind of takes you through like it's okay to be sad it's okay to have lots of emotions it's okay to um you know like my my favorite line is yes means yes anything else means no like just important lessons that are Hmm. very relevant to the gender or not the gender you know the dear girl has like a different has a different twist it's more like you know dear girl like you can wear anything do anything be anything Uh, and it says the same kind of um lessons of course for boys too just a little bit differently you know or like make friends who are different from you make friends you know like things like that so i loved it when i first read dear boy it almost made me cry um you know and that was also when i was hormonal and pregnant but i still love those books my son loves dear boy my daughter's still not into dear girl yet because she's two um but i still love that one and my son loves that one she'll get there Um, she'll get there i so the reason i chose one fish two fish red fish blue fish is it was one of the first times i read a book when i was I remember when it was read to me as a kid where I understood that like books can do more than just tell a story. Um, Hmm, When I first, when I first was read that book, I was like, it felt like I was doing something fun. I was like, what are we doing? This is exciting. Um, Yeah. And, and, and as a result, like when I choose, when I pick out books that I want to read my niece and nephew, I want ones that are Mm -hmm. not just like, this is a tomato. The tomato went to school. The tomato, yeah. you know, ate lettuce. Yeah. And then the tomato mm-hmm. came home. I'm like, you know. Yeah. Like, totally. whereas, you know, he has some books where, like, it's like, this is a blank animal or whatever. And the animal makes this noise. And then he and I get to make the noise together. And it's like, this is super fun. And it's got little pullouts and stuff. And you can, like, yeah, pop things up. And yeah, I'm like, for sure. I want to do this all day. Have you, um, I almost wrote this down too. Like this is my second favorite series. Have you read the Little Blue Truck series? I think I read that to my nephew, I believe. Okay. The Little Blue Truck series is amazing. It's so good. And they have one for all the holidays. They have one for like back to school, leading the way, make, you know, meets a new neighbor. And I feel like those are so cute. Very rhythmic. They all rhyme. Um, Important little lessons. All the little farm animals. Like it's really cute. It's so well done. I want to write an adult version of the spot books where instead of like spot goes to school, it's like, like spot hits a joint, you know, <laughs> spot has his first encounter with the cops, you know, oh my spot God, goes to prison you. because he refuses to rat on his friend. Like that is what I think. Like I want to see the spot series where it's like spot meets the wire. That's what I want. I know? would pay so much money for that spot series. I think we should try it. Should we do I'm it? In. I'm in. Should it be? <laughs> we'll test it on. We'll test it on your on your son. Who will be like, hmm? Okay, so wait. What is you said? Spot free based. What is free basing? And I'm like, don't worry, it's not for you. It's not for you. For the older demo. Um, oh, 
Okay, wait. One day, so now, honey, one day you'll understand. <laughs> yeah, one day you'll know what freebasing is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, well, let's do this question for me. So okay. I'll, we'll do the same question, um, which is, what is my favorite book? I'm not an author, but as someone who appreciates literature, um, um, what is my favorite book to read to my niece and nephew? And yeah. I'm going to write down two, and I will give you points for either one. Okay. Because this is such a broad... Um, yeah. Okay, so I get two. I gotta do. I should choose two. Yes, and I'm desperate to give you a hint, but I won't. Because it's not fair to other guests no. who have come before you. No, it's not. Um, you know what? I'll give you a tiny hint. I'll just say this. Yeah, uh, give me a tiny hint. I love reading these to them because these were read to me. Oh, okay. So it's a classic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, okay, good. You got it. All right. Okay, so ready? flip your board on three. One, okay. two, three. Let me see. Oh, I almost did the giving tree. No. I, what did I can't read yours? What did you I say? I did. Okay, so I did chicka chicka boom boom and um the cat in the hat or slash the foot book. Okay. And I, I literally the giving tree like went through my mind. Cat in the hat's incredible. I don't know chicka chicka boom boom, but it sounds like something I would like. You don't know chicka chicka boom boom? I grew up on chicka chicka boom boom. I don't know it. I I like wrote... A told B and B told C. I'll meet you at the top of the coconut tree. That now sounds a little familiar to me. Yeah. Um, and I think I just you might recognize the cover. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wrote down The Giving Tree and I wrote down Caps for Sale. I Have don't you ever know. Heard of that? I've never heard of Caps for Sale. Okay. Let me quickly touch on each of these. And then I have so <laughs> many rising order questions. But um, The Giving Tree, the reason I love that book is because there, I, I think that empathy is something that as much as it is natural, it is something that children are going to have to experience to understand. Yeah. And I think that the giving tree is a great way for a kid to start having experiences with the feelings of, I feel sad because this individual, in this case tree, this tree Mm -hmm. is giving so much of itself and it makes me Thank sad you. and I feel sad for, for the tree. And I understand how sad mm-hmm. that could be for the tree. I, mm-hmm. I, I'm not a parent, but to me, like empathy is, is a tough thing for anyone, for adults to understand. Mm-hmm. And yeah. to me, it, it, it meant a lot to me in reading it as an adult and as a kid to yeah. be able to have that uh, a space to explore my own emotional reaction to something that maybe wasn't like, you know, here's a truck, goes down the street, and everything's great. Um, 1,000%. You know? 1,000%. I, so that's no, kind of like I totally why that book agree. meant a lot. There's so many lessons packed into that book that you don't even really fully understand, um, but it's almost kind of like, you know, psychological, the lesson. And you're right, the emotions that it naturally evokes in, um, and like kind of talking through what that means to children is so important. Um, uh, yeah, and I do feel like it's like- here. I know. I love that. I love that. You're going to be such a great parent. If you, you know, want kids, if you want, I do. Them. I do. I do. Okay. I want. I want to have two kids, um, and I want them to be really easy, not fussy, and let me sleep. So I think that's pretty oh, reasonable. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yep. Do I just put in that request? Where do I? Let's like put lower in the form? our expectations. Just need to lower those a bit. That's what I used to say on first dates a yeah. lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like. Let's lower those. Um, whoa, whoa, down, ooh, down yeah. a few notches. I was like, they're like, so, um, what do you like? And I'm like, who cares? Um, uh, the second book I wrote down is Caps for Sale, which was read yeah. to me by my dad growing up. It is about a gentleman who walks through town who is selling hats, but he keeps all of them on his head. So they're like yeah. all the way up, and these monkeys in the trees – keep reaching down and grabbing the hats and putting them on. And he has to keep getting the hats back uh-huh. uh, so he could sell them. And so it's just like a very, it, it is, it is not as emotional. It's very fun. It's very silly. It's rhythmic. And it's got like a quality of like this fun down. kind of like, like they tease each other. Like the monkeys are teasing him and he's kind of the ornery guy of like, come on team, give me the hats. <laughs> nah, yeah. It's fun. It's really fun. I've, I've never seen that one. I'm right. I wrote it down because I want to get that. I'll, that'll be a good buy it Monica from your Christmas local visit. bookstore. You, you know, know, I'm the biggest fan of that. Here's my question for you. Um, yeah, I want to ask such a hard hitting question. Like, what were oh. your tax return? No. Um, what have you? <laughs> you don't want to get into that. 
It's, trust me, no ones are fun. Um, no, have you scared. gotten any, uh, I don't know, DMs, emails, anything from people you've never met being like, Rising Order changed my life? Oh, um, I've gotten a lot of messages of people who said that like it really helps them during a dark period that they were going through or in the midst of going through. Yeah, definitely. That's amazing. I've gotten a few of those. Yes. Have you gotten um, anyone who's just been like rising order, more like rising border? <laughs> <laughs> like, is anyone? Because here's the thing. So I get no. trolls online all the time in my content. I now, bet you do. Then yeah, most of them are just like, he, those ears are so big, he could probably hear, you know, an ant sleeping. You know what I'm like? Thank you. That's nice. Um, Haven't heard that one before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's weird is it's always about ants, but. Um, Regardless, have you been like trolled at all online for it? Oh, no, knock on wood. Not yet. I know it's coming, but I feel like that just means you made it. Like, it you know what? You're getting trolled. F yeah. Like, what yeah. Are, what's that little troll doing? Does anyone hurt you? No. But like, here no. you are taking the time out of your day to like go and like comment on this. So great. I, I think it's a great sign if you've been trolled. I... Maybe I won't say that once I have been trolled. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> if, 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 if. If it were me, the big thing I would have trouble with if I if I were to publish a book, spoiler alert, that's not happening. But if I were to publish a book, um, I think that I would need to like go into my web browser and block yeah. the, the Amazon page for my book so I couldn't read the reviews. Oh my gosh, yes. Like that is one thing. So I was like, if there have been bad reviews, that's not really the same as trolling. No. But like... Um, I just know that's inevitable. Like the book is not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Um, and I do not let myself read them at all. Um, the problem is, is we're doing Goodreads giveaways with my publisher. And that means sometimes I have to go on to the Goodreads page. And so I have to see like how many people want to read it now and how many, like what the rating is and like, like how many comments and reviews are on it now. And that I try to like, just like get past, you know, so. Yeah, you're like, I don't want to see any of these. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I had a comic on here once who said, she was like, I would never want to make something that everybody likes. I'd rather make oh, something no. that yeah. some people love and some people hate because mm -hmm. at least that way I'm getting Personally really strong something. responses. Totally. I don't want people to be like, this is like, you know, toast with your breakfast. It's fine. Comes on the plate. You don't order it. Some people eat yeah. it. Some people don't. And it's kind of whatever. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that when it comes to literature in particular, like there's a very popular book that I'm reading right now and I'm trying to read and get into. And I've been surprised personally. And I realize that I'm also looking at this from a very critical eye as an author. Like I don't really... It's hard for me to enjoy books sometimes because I, I'm constantly studying them for a craft from a craft perspective. Um, but this book, I'm not very impressed with the writing, and and it's a very very big book. And um, you know, is it by I an think airport it's author? Definitely by an airport author. Okay, got it. Um, but I think the biggest thing on this is like. You know, to your point exactly, like if if you love it because you loved it or you hate it because like you hated this character, or you hated how you know, but to not like it because the writing or something isn't bad, I feel like that's so different. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think that a comedy is slightly ruined for me when I watch a special. I'm just like, Bleh, like you know, or like I'll either see jokes coming from a mile away, or I'll criticize the construction, or I'll notice if the construction of multiple jokes in a row are the very same construction. Very yeah. much in the same way that like sentence structure. If you see like 50 sentences in a row, starting with a dependent clause, you're like, punch me in the face. One, exactly. Well, it is so crazy how it's like exactly the same for you, but different, you know, but the same. Yeah. The same, but yeah. different. I, yeah. I would worry um, from an author perspective, because I, not to like de degrade my own art here, but like, I think that you can kind of go through life if you want to, and avoid stand up. You can do that. It's not hard mm -hmm. to do to avoid stand up. As, as for books, I think I think it's it. You'd be hard pressed to just yeah. avoid them for your life. And so yeah. it's hard to have that be the thing that's a, slightly ruined for you, because yeah. like that's a big thing. Like book reading books is a big thing that it's hard to just ruin. And and this is fantastic, but I feel like there's 
there's apps like TikTok that are making it become like a culture, mm. you know, and um, like reading, like book talks and reading and who can read this many books and this many, you know, in this month and this year. And, you know, uh, like I find myself because of that. And I I'm, I know this is the same for stand up probably too, but like I feel like because there's so many and you're constantly comparing yourself to the other authors and their experience and their journey, even though they're all so different. Yeah. Um, it's hard not to do that. I have found in this stage where I am in. No? Um, are you ready for the lightning round? Mm-hmm. My tea's gone. I'm bummed. My team's gone. So I had to, to bring out the Stanley. I respect it. I respect it. Listen, Stanley doesn't sponsor. So you know what? Until they I do, I do love that. I'm not I highly recommend Steepers. Um, for this time of year, especially, I will I will report back, hopefully oh. by the time this airs, about whether it helps my immunity because Lord <laughs> knows I need it. But you're ready for the lightning round? Yes. Okay. Do I have to write anything down for this? No. No writing. No writing. So this is five fast questions. They do not at all have to be fast answers. Take your time. Is the same questions okay. that we uh, end every episode with. So question one: What is a favorite ritual of yours? So for example, I love brewing tea. It brings me a lot of joy. I love brewing tea too. Um, drinking my coffee in the morning, hands down oh. favorite. Um, I do, I do love home? tea. Tea. I have my tea in the evening. I love brewing my tea in the evening to relax and unwind. Always herbal, always decaffeinated. Sorry, can't do caffeine past one o'clock in the afternoon. Coffee in the morning. I respect it. What, now, are we doing at home coffee or are you going and grabbing coffee? I love to go and grab coffee as a treat, but I'm trying to do more at home coffee with my Nespresso and my little froth oh? whipper. An espresso. I wonder if I want to make myself a latte. We also have an espresso. Um, Mm -hmm. We do more iced coffee here. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. But I respect that you're doing, you're foaming the milk and I respect it. I'm into it. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I love it when it's hot and cozy. I, well, especially as it's starting to get colder and I'm in LA, but you are not. So I understand it's not the warmest for you. It's Um, not. It's not. Question two. What is a running bit you have with a friend or partner that makes you laugh? I feel like with Justin, our running bit – is it bit or bit? Bit. B-I-T. B-I-T. Okay. B-I-T. I'm going to use that from now on. I love that running bit. I feel like our running bit is just making so much fun of the kids behind their backs and being like, just fucking uh, – like kicking them and like three uh, – and just like, God, you shut the fuck up. <laughs> and then, and then like the kids always. turn and you're like, kidding, we love you. And then we're like <laughs> – Mm-hmm. Like we always just like are just like, and whenever they go to bed, we're just like laughing about like, you see what they did today? Or like they do something and we like try hard, really hard not to laugh. And then we like talk about it after. Like that's our day. That's our lives. It's just like a running bit around like the chaos of our lives and the children. And like, can you believe that happened? <laughs> I feel like I, like if a kid did something ridiculous, as soon as they went for a nap, I'd like turn to Jess and be like, what a nerd. Like, you know what I mean? I would, I'd be like a talking to A percent. We're like, God, you're such a, can you just, you're such a, like, P-U-S-S-Y. Yeah, but you well, can't. But here's I, the thing. You could spell it probably in front of the kid. They still won't know. I know. I know. I know you're right. Um, you're going to have, oh, Josh, you're going to have so much good content when you're a dad. You just just, oh, be, just have kids for your for your content. That's yeah, going to be what like, blow up. <laughs> so why did you two decide to have kids? Well, I needed some more jokes, and I felt like kids <laughs> could be a good solution. Um, question three. What is... Uh, a very controversial opinion that you have. Oh, do you want it to be literary? Because it can be literary right now. It can be whatever you want. Whatever. There's okay, no. My controversial know, opinion is The Fourth Wing, which is this book I'm talking about. It's this huge, like, fantasy book that's, like, one of the biggest things since Hunger Games. I don't think it's well written. And some people love it. People are obsessed with it. And I'm, like, I'm struggling to get into it. Now, I haven't finished it. So this is unfair. Unfair opinion, slightly. Sure. Because I do need to finish it and I need to give it the benefit of the doubt until I do finish it. Um, but I'm just, I'm kind of unimpressed. I'll say something and I don't, hmm, I don't know if people widely say this or not, but I'll say it. I think that a lot of books that become very trendy uh-huh. um, sometimes feel like poorly written YA. Yeah. And and I say that in the worst way. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. And I, I actually just, I was talking to my sister-in-law about this book because I was like, I feel like it's like YA, but adult. And 
I just think I don't think that there's anything for how popular it is. I don't think that there's anything spectacular about the writing, which to me was a little disappointing. And maybe that's because my expectations were too high because of the hype. And like I said, maybe that's because I haven't gotten far enough in where the entertainment outweighs some of my like criticisms. Yeah. So we'll have to see. But that's my controversial for right now. I think it's amazing. Um, uh-huh. Uh-huh. I, I do love that. Um, and Don't come I at will, me. Steepers. Uh, Don't come at me. Steepers. Okay? Just if you get really angry, buy the rising order. Um, <laughs> qu- <laughs> question four. Um, have you ever experienced imposter syndrome? And if so, is there one moment that really sticks with you? Oh, I never experienced imposter syndrome really at Google. I will say that. That's um, good. A lot of people talked about that, but I didn't. Um, yeah. And maybe that's because I didn't feel as invested in my job and my day job like I do in my creative work. But I feel imposter syndrome every day as a new author. Really? Every day. Yeah. You're published. You're in Penn Station. I know. I know. You're so right. But um, I don't know. I feel like I still haven't made it to the extent that I visualize myself making it. Mm. And that's just me being brutally honest. Um, And I think that's also because I didn't really know, like, going into this, I didn't really have any expectations, but I just have, I'm always, I've always been very hard on myself. So even though I didn't really know what was realistic or not for the book and what actually could happen, you know, I don't know. I'm just like, wait, I don't know. I don't know. I think that's, that's totally fine. I, I, I think we all experience it decently often um and i think what's funny is you know if you ask someone like stephen king like mm-hmm. have you made it he'd be like well i mean there's so many authors that are better like he like i think even someone like him is gonna be like oh. yeah yeah i think so i just did a, an event with um at the at our library which was big you know people came from like illinois and ohio for it and yeah yeah um, ali carter who's a new york Times bestseller and she's written she's written many um series and it's series and she's been she's very established in her career and she's written for a long time and um she's got really awesome fans who have followed her since like they were essentially in middle school reading her books and um she and i talked during that conversation about how she has she's reached the point in her career where she has all of this and this is probably the same as stephen king they can kind of do whatever they want to an extent and i i really envy that because i think that's where I would like to be too. Um, Yeah. You know, Um, but to an extent, and I think you might experience this too, like you have to write a book um, that still people want to read and the masses want to read. So you kind of have to write to the masses, but then you're not supposed to write to the masses. But like, how are you supposed to be successful then and like make a living off of this? So it's this weird dichotomy. People are always like, create what you want to create and it will find an audience. And I'm like, what if I want to create comedy that is about (laughs) sock puppets uh, in the great depression? I don't think it's going to find an audience. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think like whoever says that, like, have you ever tried to do it? Like, have you ever, to your point, like, or have you, are you in this industry trying to make it? Are you trying to make it? You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I, I mean, I think to some extent, okay, that's true. Like if you're writing inauthentically or if you are acting inauthentically and you're a comedian, like then I think that will show in your work. Absolutely. But you still have to take into account it. And book publishing is a business. I've learned that the hard way, like trying to get published. That is the lens every editor and every publishing house is looking at your book is like, will this sell? So yeah. to some extent, you know, you're like, no, that's not true. It's all <laughs> economics. A hundred percent. Um, yeah. Final question for you. I mm-hmm. typically ask people, what is your favorite tea or comfort? But I know you drink tea. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. what is your favorite tea? It really does depend on the season. Is that okay to say? Sure. What is your favorite like, tea right now? I do love a really good apple cinnamon tea right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, Don't you agree? Yeah. Where it almost yeah. tastes like dessert. Yeah. You know, and I love to have it with like a cookie or like something sweet at nighttime. That's like my number one my number one joy at the end of a long day is just like sipping apple cinnamon tea and it's, it's slightly chilly out and you got some candles going and then you have, have like a really right good if you're watching great british bake-off even better and then you have a great biscuit 
Oh, wow. Look at you, you little Brit. Okay. I know. A bit of I a know. biscuit. I have a biscuit a with my tea. A bit of a biscuit, tea. not a cookie, a biscuit. No. And here's the thing. You don't no. want to make cream horns. Um, I learned that from James Acaster's episode. Um, should we yeah. just, should we go back and redo this and talk in a British accent the whole Yeah, time? so I'm going to delete this. And I think that what we're <laughs> going to do, strictly British, uh, the whole way. Very and British we'll Bake Off themed. Let's, yes. Yes. Agreed. Yeah, Paul Hollywood. Let's Great. go. Um, that well, that's the podcast. What do you think? Oh, I think that's great. There you go. You How did I do? it. You were amazing. And for anyone who is listening, go buy the Rising Order. Yes, please. It has Look been a long journey to get here. Almost seven years. It's going to be a series. It's a thriller. Um, as I mentioned, very timely uh, themes with what's going on in our society today. Um, and if you do, please reach out. Yeah. The Rising Order 2 Electric Boogaloo will be coming, you know, in the coming years. <laughs> um, well, Claire, thank you so much. This was lovely. Thank you so much for having me. And Steepers, cheers. Cheers oh, to cheers. making it through the day and oh, pursuing our it. dreams and to this messy, messy life. That was Claire Eisenthal. You can follow her on Instagram at Claire Eisenthal. We'll be back next week. So until then, happy steeping. Have you ever heard the name V.E. Schwab? Wait, the author? Yes. One of our friends from Google just took a picture of my book at Penn Station. And it's like on the front of the Penn Station and it's right next to her book. Right. So me and Victoria went to school together, but I never knew her. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Wait, I need I to show you this picture. Okay, can you see that our books are literally right next to each other? That's a pen yes. station. That's incredible. That's Isn't that incredible. crazy?